In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about polygons, circles, and arcs. And to get started, I'm going to go ahead and begin by grabbing this guy and making him go away. And then I'm going to go to the top view. So I am now looking directly down on the green and red axes, which of course are parallel to each other. To help accommodate this so that you get a nice full screen, I'm going to just go ahead and go out four feet hit enter. I've got a line in there and then I could hit escape. I can manually zoom in like so or I can click on the zoom extents button and then just come out just a little bit so that I can see both of those. So we've got a four foot line drawn there and I'm just going to go ahead and type in control A and hit delete to get rid of everything because I've got my workspace set. Now we talked about polygons ever so briefly before. If I click on the polygon tool I can come in here and you'll see down in the measurement box that it says that it's right now set up for eight sides. If I type in three and hit enter I can now draw a triangle and I have my choice of two types of measurements. I can either do an inscribed radius which refers to that dotted circle that goes around it from the center to the vertex if you will but if I press the control key or the option key on the Mac, it changes to the distance from the center of the triangle to perpendicular to one of the sides. So you have your choice and you can just go ahead and click and it will finish the um, go ahead and finish the triangle for you and you're, you're pretty much done. But most of the time you're not going to want to draw an equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and draw a different type using the protractor tool. So I can go ahead and again I will draw four feet. Oops, wasn't going across the screen parallel to the red edge. There we go. And then I can continue going up and as I do notice how the inference tools in SketchUp tried to tell me that the line is parallel to the green axis and therefore perpendicular to the base of the triangle. And I could go ahead and click, but if I want something other than 90 degrees, how do I know where to click? I mean, the measurement toolbox is telling me that, you know, giving me a length, but if I want a specific angle, I need to do a little bit of laying out. So I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to go to a new tool which is called the protractor tool and it's just what it says it is. It's a protractor. So I'll put it on this vertex or endpoint at this point and as I move over to the left it's telling me that the first reference line is going to be on the red axis and then after clicking once I can move it around and where I, I click it will stay or if I want to put in 33.6 degrees. I can do that and it doesn't draw the line for me but now I can come in and come up however much I want to along this line. So I'll just say um, three feet and then I can complete my triangle. And you can do this with just about any of the different tools. If I want to make, let's make a quick isosceles triangle. It's just the, the same thing, so or repeat it twice. So I'll go ahead and type in four feet. I'll bring in the protractor tool. And I will come up at, say, 32 degrees. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot my first reference line, didn't I? There we go. Now we can type in 32 degrees. Sorry about that. And then again, we can bring it over here to the other end point. This time I remembered. Just get up close. Doesn't really matter because when you type in 32 again, it, it, you know, it puts it in. And then we can just finish our triangle by snapping to the inferences and then you can take and get rid of these reference lines or you can leave them in if you're trying to teach a particular concept and everything is everything's good
One more type of triangle I want to show you. I'm not sure I'll teach you a whole bunch more about triangles, but you'll see where I'm going here in a second. So we'll just type in four feet, hit enter, and then we'll come up three feet. Oops, there we go. Wasn't got away from my inference there. So there we go, three feet. And then when I complete it, if you've done a little bit of geometry, you'll know that this is a three, four, five triangle. But you can verify that using the dimensioning tool, which is also new. And we'll get into more of this later on. But we'll go ahead and click on the dimension tool. And I'll just bring my cursor over the base of the triangle. Click on it once and pull out. And it gives me a dimension of 4 feet. Dimension of 3 feet. And then finally you do the hypotenuse. Whoops. I clicked on the midpoint. That's why it did that. And there we go, five feet. And you kind of have to mouse out close. Not close, but rather you need to mouse out perpendicular to the side if you want your dimensional line to be parallel with the line that you're measuring. Because if I move over here like this, I can start to get some goofy stuff. Of course, with SketchUp, what's nice is you can come in and you can erase any of these at any time. Okay, next let's go ahead and take a look at polygons. Like we said, the polygon tool, you can choose how many sides you want. So if I want a seven-sided polygon, I type in seven, hit enter, and click on its center. And then as I move out with my mouse, You'll notice that down in the measurement box it's asking me for the inscribed radius, which if I click right now will be about 1 feet 7 inches. And you can see the circle going around the polygon that is touching each of the vertexes. But possibly instead what I want is the circle inside the polygon, where the polygon is circumscribing the circle. So if I press con the control key on a PC or I think the option key on a Mac, See how it changes? It is now drawing from the center of the polygon to uh, the midpoint of one of the sides. So there we go. And that works with any of the different polygon tools. Circles in SketchUp are actually polygons. They're not purely mathematical circles. They're going to be great for what we're doing, but you know, you, you just need to know that because you know, when you're drawing circles, you're drawing cylinders, and when we get into arcs, you'll, you'll notice when you zoom in that they are indeed polygons. And I have mine set, just from previous practice, to 36 sides. The default is 24. You can create more, you can create less, but it's still always going to be a regular polygon. So, for example, if I zoom in here, I think you can tell that Here's an endpoint, and there's an endpoint. One more thing you need to be aware of is that the circle has a center. So, for example, if I want to draw a line from, say, out here to the center of the circle, I might not find it. But if I mouse over the edge for just a second and then come down carefully, SketchUp remembers what we're talking about, and I can draw that radius. It's not a radius yet, but if I click on that, de delete the, the outside part of the line, then we've got a radius. So again, if you want to draw from the outside into the center, I've already got the center because I drew this line, just mouse over and pause just for a moment. SketchUp will remember that you're interested in the circle, and you can come in and get the center. Arcs are a fun tool to use in SketchUp. There are four different types, but all arcs are the same. They're made from a center point, and then they have a radius. Then you choose how much of a circle, or the angle of the arc, that you want to include. And so that's how the first tool works. I'll do just one more for you here. Notice down in the lower left-hand corner how it tells you where you want the center point to be for the arc. And then you can go ahead and either put in a radius, so I'll put in one foot. 
put in 12 inches too and then as we start to drag down if we put in 45 degrees and hit enter we get one eighth of a circle that's the first type of tool but sometimes you don't know where the center of the arc is and so we can go ahead and see I'll just go ahead and put in a quick rectangle here so if I want to put an arc on top of this that's a semicircle I would use this tool and he wants to know where the start of the arc is and where the end point on the arc is and then you put in what's called the bulge and as you come up see when you get close if you pause it you'll get an inference or a snap telling you that it is indeed half of a circle okay so that's the second arc tool the third arc tool is a little different type where you just go ahead and select the start and then you can sort of you know the second point so you can tie some geometry see how it's I've got the start point the second point and it's wherever I want the third point to be we'll go ahead and click on that when we do you'll notice that this really looks like a polygon doesn't it now for a lot of our projects it's going to be just fine but here's a little tip if you want to smooth it out select the arc and then right click on it and choose divide and it's going to ask you down you know how many segments you want and right now it's two I'm going to go ahead and just put in 50. It's the same arc, but it becomes a lot smoother. It's sort of like taking a circle, you know, choosing 500 sides for it. Let's see, what have we got for the last tool? Um, da -da -da -da. Oh, pi. Pi is sort of the same thing. So you just go ahead and select the center. And what this does for you is it just goes ahead and draws in the last couple of segments to create a face or a surface. So you could have done that before with, with these two lines. We started with the original tool, could have clicked on the center, come around like this. We would have just gotten the arc. So from there, we'd have to complete the side. And my center's up here somewhere, but see it's not showing up, is it? So I have to come down here, mouse over the arc for just a second. And then when I come up there, the center shows up. And we get our Pi. So the, so the Pi tool just helps to fill it in if you know where you're going. But all of these arcs are, are, are pretty much the same. And of course, you can create them by creating circles and then you know del deleting the parts of the circle you don't want to form the arc.